Well, hello, how are you? I'm okay, thanks for asking. As usual, I was not planning to make this video. I just, you know, have more on my mind and I figured I will go ahead and talk about it because I actually kind of have a good example um, to what I said in my last vlog video talking about keeping up with the Joneses. And I have a really, really good example that I just found out. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But firstly, of course, the star of the show, Buster. Let's talk about Buster just for a quick moment. So Buster, 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 Buster. I gotta figure some things out because I don't know if there's a, a leak somewhere or uh, something. I don't know, it, it, it does things. Anywho, I'm not worried about that. That's not, that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about what the last, kind of modification video went over about changing this stuff up over here. Yeah, as usual, I did it wrong. <laughs> See, you gotta think, I'm just an everyday guy. I, you know, have a real estate job outside of YouTube. Uh, so that takes up some of my time. If I'm busy in between things, sometimes I don't fully think uh, through things <laughs> before I do them. I did not think this through correctly. Someone pointed out in the comments, actually two people pointed out both problems I have with the setup. If you remember, I ran the line from the baffle plate on the side of the engine to a T-fitting here, which goes between the Mishimoto catch can back to the intake and out here. Well, the problem with doing it that way is, one, I created a boost leak that, well, I thought I was able to correct, but lo and behold, that didn't quite work out in my favor either. Because you gotta think, when this pressure rises, when the air comes in here, this pressurizes, no check valve, so the air is gonna go travel up, back up that line, back through the catch can, into that T-fitting, and come out here, because path of least resistance. That's where it's gonna wanna go. In the same way, uh, the vacuum that the car is gonna pull is going to wanna come out here and through here. It's not gonna just pull out of here. So in order to run the setup this way, which would be optimal because the car's gotta vent properly and I don't wanna have to run anything over there because obviously that's gonna be a problem. So to be able to run this setup properly now, I need two check valves because I need to have a check valve that basically goes on this line or before this line here, before it gets to the tank and I need another check valve coming from here to the T-fitting, one somewhere on this line. So if I have a check valve here and a check valve there, that will pretty much, you know, that will that'll fix this. Because the check valve here is only gonna allow flow to go this way, not back that way. So under boost, it won't allow anything to go back that way. And then the one over here will only go this way. So under vacuum, nothing can go back out that way through this. So that's gonna be the right way of doing it. And yeah, it's probably gonna be 80 or so bucks, believe it or not, because of the fittings I'm gonna need. It's all AN fittings and stuff. It's race car crap. At least it will be done better than kind of how I have it. I just didn't want to spend that kind of money. That's why I do things on the cheap, but sometimes you can't always do things too cheap. I've demonstrated that quite a few times. So yeah, I just wanted to run that by everyone real quick because it's that, yeah, I, I'm good at making mistakes. Live and learn, you know, that's why people, I just, I think it's funny there was some people that commented on the video, I'm very few, but still they're out there and they say stuff like, oh, if you can't handle it, modify, don't modify your car, something like that. Like, oh, stop it, I'm sorry. I didn't wake up this morning and piss excellence like you did, you know, to excuse me. Just stop it, be for real for a minute. No one knows everything the minute they're born. Everyone has to learn. I'm learning still, and at least I'm man enough to admit my mistakes, so, you know, it is what it is. I put this out for the world to see, and people probably watch these videos, they know what I'm doing wrong, they see what I'm doing wrong, and that's fine, I know I'm gonna screw up because I'm learning, and it ain't gonna stop me from showing the process, so, yeah, however you feel about that. Anywho, I think I'm gonna pop a squat here and um, pull up a chair, and we're gonna talk about something real quick. All right, this should be good.
Mainly what I wanted to talk about in this video was, remember the last video I made, the vlog video about talking about keeping up with the Joneses and how I've kind of redeveloped my mentality when it comes to cars to try not to be susceptible to that mindset, that mentality of, oh, well, because they got something nice, I feel bad because I don't have what they have. Even though I want it, I know I can't, but I'll still find a way to get it. Um, that, because that gets you in trouble, it really does. Since having this car, I've met a few people with EcoBoost, but no one's really went out of the way of making anything crazy. I've never met anyone or known anyone with a built EcoBoost. As I was saying in the last video, being an influencer, a content creator, you seem to have this pressure, or you feel like you have this pressure to uh, be better than the next person, just so you can create um, content that people want to go and see, right? So I explained how a lot of what got me in trouble with Buster and the engine uh, was due to me wanting to try to find ways to push the car to have this super high performing EcoBoost and, and all of this uh, to, to be, you know, the spokesperson for the platform, to, to be this person on YouTube with this super high horsepower or, you know, whatever the case may have been, EcoBoost, and yeah, that got me in trouble. The whole keeping up with the Joneses thing and feeling compelled to try to have a fast car messed me up. Well, I just found out something recently, over the weekend. It doesn't really make me feel better about the past. It just makes me feel better about how I've restructured my mind going forward because this is an example of what can happen. I've been keeping things pretty vague because I didn't want to throw anyone under the bus. I didn't want to have to create any drama over the internet. That was never my intention, even though there was drama personally behind the scenes that had taken place that was exchanged between the business owner of a particular shop here in Florida and me over the public address of my car taking a crap. You know, when that happened, I blocked everyone related to that business out of my life. I didn't want to have nothing to do with them. Even though the two other guys that worked there, I didn't really have a problem with them. I just shut it all out of my mind because two things happened. Uh, having to deal with the stress of a blown engine sucks. I don't recommend it for anyone. As I was saying before, I did not know anyone with a built EcoBoost until I met these guys at this shop in Florida. They had built EcoBoost Mustangs. And, um, well, I wouldn't say built, not at the time. Well, no, the one did have a built engine, I think. The other one didn't. He was just pushing a stock Gen 2 engine to its max. They were pretty quick cars. You know, they're probably, one was probably in the low 400 wheel. The other one was probably mid to upper 400 maybe um maybe you know i'm not exactly sure they never disclosed power to me they you know all that was hush hush uh but i'm just guessing that's where they were and of course at the time my car was nothing more than very small bolt-ons untuned kind of just rocking what i got after meeting these guys i felt a little inferior there was a little bit of enviness that came over me after meeting them and, and seeing their cars and making me feel like, dang, really wish I had that. That would really, you know, make me feel better about myself and my presence on YouTube, having this super crazy EcoBoost Mustang, excuse me. So it created a bit of enviness in me, which when everything went down, I kind of used it as an excuse just to, to limit myself, just to stay away because it kind of was messing with me. Um, and my, my emotions. Nothing against those guys, but it is, it's just how it affected me personally. So obviously me, me and the owner, uh, I don't know how he perceived it, but obviously they were dead to me, especially him. Yeah, I, it was all done. I didn't want nothing to do with it. Lo and behold, come to find out, which by the way, I wish this on no one. And as an entrepreneur myself, who's tried to start many businesses and failed and who is currently trying to maintain momentum here on YouTube, I completely understand the hardships of trying to run a business and I, I wouldn't want to run anything retail. 
or anything like I'm um, trying to run a automotive performance shop. Not in today's economy. I don't think it's a good business model to begin with, and it ain't one, it ain't a good one now, for sure. Come to find out, uh, this particular shop that I've had some beef with, well, they've uh, succumbed to the current economic conditions and are no longer operating. I don't know if they will be out of business forever. If these just given up on the whole thing or there's just kind of restructuring things and trying to figure out what the next step is I don't know all I know is they're selling everything and and everything so with that said not only is the shop they're liquidating everything in the shop the guys with these built EcoBoost Mustangs which by the way I, I didn't mention that after the fact after my car took a crap they went and truly built they bought they ended up getting deals through EMS, um, you know, because they were a little bit of, I guess, a, a partnership to promote their products in exchange for better margins on EMS products and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, they were using all EMS stuff. They were featured in EMS videos for, you know, putting their engines together. They ended up doing the whole shebang. One went with you know, like your everyday EMS build and the other one went like a ball to the wall stuff. Well, they were basically poster childs for the, the, the business. You know, all these built EcoBoost cars. It's not all what they did, but it was a big focus of theirs was focusing on these EcoBoost cars. So when the b business went under, I'm sure it's not so much because they, these cars weren't owned by the business. These guys owned the cars, but they lost their jobs. They were young dudes. Um, they were the only cars they had, and they told me, they said that they were only able to do what they did um, because they worked there. They could go and work on their cars, you know? They, that was the perk. They, were, they had access to all the tools, the lifts, the this, that, and the other. So that's why they were able to do what they did with these cars, and they told me they would not have probably been able to do it otherwise. Losing your job, losing the access to all of that, well, guess what? Now these guys have these cars up for sale. I don't know where the other car is, actually. I only seen the, uh, the other car. Um, the less, or the more tame of the two, the one, the, the older, it's like a 2016, I think, or 17? I think it's a 16 uh, EcoBoost car. 6R80 car. Now he's got the whole car for sale. Part, well, I, I don't know if he's selling the whole car, but he's parting the whole thing out. The EMS, everything, all that money that was spent put into that car to, to have these poster childs of the business, these built EcoBoost cars, they're now all being sold off. You know, that's exactly the point I was trying to make in that last video. And, you know, I envied these guys. I really did. I, I put myself through crap. Dragged myself straight through the mud, worrying about, because these guys had these fast EcoBoost cars, that I wasn't gonna have it. I put myself through hell because of this. We fast forward, and they're losing everything they've put their you know, money and sweat equity into, blood, sweat, and tears. And this is what I was trying to say about, you know, try not to invest so much of your time and emotion making something to be the next best or to whatever because life happens. Now these guys that I envy, they have to sell everything. They have to give it all up. Like I said, I don't know about the other guy, but at least the one dude I know is going that route. And these cars that I was envious of, these people who are envious of are now where I was. Actually, no, they're, they're gonna be where I was before I got to the point I did with my car because now I'm the one with the built EcoBoost making 400 plus wheel horsepower and I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> it's funny, you know how they say uh, everything in hindsight's 2020. I don't know. It, it's just a weird thing because I spent so much time worrying about what they were doing and trying to think of ways to push the, the stock HPP engine past what they were doing with their cars. They were actually a benchmark for me because I knew what the one car was capable of. Um, you know, it was running like I think high to mid sevens in the eighth, you know, it was a pretty quick car for, for it was, but I mean, this guy, I mean, it was gutted and running to the limit. I don't know how these cars performed after they got, you know, the works done to them. I never kept up with them after that point because that was after the owner decided to say what he had to say. And, uh, you know, I terminated that relationship. But still looking back on it, it's just crazy to me.
because I spent so much time worrying about it. They had to give it all up. Now that I've restructured my mind, I know I'm comfortable where I'm at with my car and, and the process that I'm choosing going forward with my car, now it makes more sense to me. And what I'm trying to say is, as I've worried about all those guys, and now they've lost what I was worrying about, now I have what they had. And as long as I play my cards right, I will get to the point I want to get at and not have to feel like I have to worry about what the next person is doing because life happens. I feel bad for these dudes that they have to choose this route. It happens. I had to go through it multiple times with cars and I didn't want to have to do it again with this car, which is why I said what I said in that last video and why I chose to go about things the way I'm going about it now. So I don't have to give up all the hard work and time and, and everything that I've put into the cars. Just like how those cars were the poster child for their business, even though I've had multiple cars on the channel, Buster, Buster is kind of the poster child for cars created. It's really the car that's gotten the most attention, whether it be goofy videos or legit, um, you know, car videos. Building the car, uh, you know, tuning the car, benchmarking the car, whatever the case may be, it's all been Buster. Buster has the most videos of any other car I've ever had. Um, there's more videos of Buster probably twice, three times almost than the highest, which I think would have been the SHO. Yeah, I, I don't want to lose Buster because it is part of my brand. It's part of my identity now and who I've become. And yeah, I've kind of nestled myself as a unofficial uh, EcoBoost spokesperson, I guess, but I've obviously have created my own very distinct path with the EcoBoost stuff, um, only through my personal experiences. I'm probably the only EcoBoost enthusiast who is as budget-minded and does the things that the way I do. So I think that gives me a little, mm, I wouldn't say a, an edge, but it gives me a little bit of a uniqueness that may be attractive to other people. So, you know, I'm gonna rock that. Buster, I don't know where Buster's going to go. I know where it's at now, how much work it's taken to get to this point, but I'm not sure where it's going to go. Who knows? Maybe Buster will be the next thousand horsepower street driven EcoBoost Mustang or something. I don't know. It, it all depends. It all depends. I would love to do something crazy, wicked and wild with it, like every influencer tries and does, but we know how this goes and I told you I have to be smart about it to get to that point because I can't risk losing the car right now. So yeah, I thought I would take this newfound information and share it with you and use it to drive home the point I made in the last video. Let me know what you think about that. Oh, also I wanted to mention, um, I was going to work on some zero to 60 stuff, trying to see uh, where Buster is now with zero to 60, see if I can actually get it pretty low, even with the tires I have on there. I wanted to see how good I could get 0 to 60. So this will require some testing and tuning as always, uh, but that's all postponed because of the issue with the breather setup, obviously, until I get that fixed. I'm not driving the car hard because it's you know got a boost leak and whatnot. So I'm just kind of taking it easy until I get that fixed. Um, probably gonna be ordering parts here soon and they take a week or so to get here. So once I get that fixed, I'm gonna start testing that. I don't know if I'm gonna come out with any other type of video like this between then. I know they're boring and whatnot, but I still feel compelled to make these type of videos and this type of content because I am a very transparent person or I like to try to be. And I try to be real because there's no benefit in being someone you're not. At least I don't think so. But yeah, so hopefully that's soon-ish maybe week or so. Um, so that'd be cool to see what Buster can do. Buster unofficially may be faster than the SHO and quarter mile. I don't think it's going to beat the SHO, at least on the street, zero to 60. SHO officially records was 4.2 seconds, four seconds with rollout. Uh, 4.2 was the fastest zero to 60 I ever got on the SHO. Um, only because the tires I chose for that car could have been better and it was spinning on cold roads when I was doing the zero to 60 tests. That car probably could have done sub four second, but regardless, it's what I have. 4.2 seconds is the time to beat out of my personal collection. Can Buster do it? 
going to have to stay tuned and see what happens. But until then, I think I'm going to finally wrap it up here for this video. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap it up here. Yeah, you know the drill. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and keep a lookout for next Cars Creative video.